There was great expectation on day one as the ASA 2018 National Track and Field Championships got underway. And of course, that championship delivered on day one. No fewer than four records tumbling, including the women's 100 meter record at a national level and a world record for a para athlete. And uh, it certainly was a wonderful day with the cream of the crop of South Africa's uh, athletics talent all gathered in one place, all but one of the medalists from the 2017 World Championships present at Turkey's for what is going to be a memorable occasion. Already it has delivered. Now we are out and about at Alci de Villiers Stadium at Turks University, a place that prides itself in track and field. We're on the blue track, of course, for what is an exceptional three days of the top talents. 32 degrees is where the mercury peaked on day two, was a sweltering hot day once more, which means, of course, that for the shorter distances, for the sprinters, it is a fantastic day. You see the excitement behind me with the hammer throw happening there. Of course, Chris Harams looking for a 23rd national championship. There's a time on that board of 1969. We'll save that for a little bit later because that time has absolute significance. Now, lots of field events taking place today. Triple jump happening, shot put happening, and of course the hammer throw happening. But it's all about this track and this line. Who will cross it first this evening as South Africa will crown a new 100 meter champion in both the men's and women's races? So, that really, this home stretch is what day two of the ASA National Track and Field Champs is all about. So, let's go to some of the finest action from the day. Then the start list for the men's triple jump that should be an intriguing final amongst those in contention just 19 years old junior Berfu the man who claimed the bronze at last year's national championships up against uh, amongst others Mohoswa and indeed Hultzumukwena an 11 time champion between long jump and triple jump going for his sixth triple jump title Menziem Tembu he's one to watch as well the 2016 national champion turn 33 just over a week ago, did uh, Hotsu 2008 Olympic silver medalist in the long jump. Much of his uh, celebrated victories have come in the long jump, but he's a fine triple jumper. And indeed is both the reigning Commonwealth Games champion, a former African champion in the triple jump. What can Hotsu Mukwena do? Good hitch jump at the end. I thought doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. Going up a little short of where you'd like to be. Sixteen five two one six five two. Just lost a little in the air. And then fell backwards onto that right elbow. So 16 and a half meters is a pretty decent leap. He extends his lead in this men's triple jump with a 16.52 leap. Oh, Mazim has just jumped, but Menziem Tembu now, former national champion, was crowned in Stellenbosch two years ago. This is a man who can go 16 and a half meters. Taking his leaps to the lead in 16.52. for a legitimate jump, a legal jump. He's got the white flag, so at least it'll be registered. He has gone some way into the pit here. Just making sure. Good foot on the takeoff board. One six, one two. Men's in Tebu. Bill is capable of challenging for a medal here. Three, seven, two. Look to be over 16 meters. It'll place him among the favorites early on. So indeed he is 40 centimeters behind Hotsumokwena, but he's second overall. Well, it's 200 meters mixed age T12 para race. And in lane four, Sheldon Thomas in the T13 category. That's visually impaired. And in Christian Schultz, T44 in lane six. Schultz on the outside, Thomas inside him. Thomas running very well around this bend at the moment. And Sheldon Thomas looking extremely good coming around that bend. Nice high knee lift. He's got very good technique, does Thomas. And a very fast finish here for Sheldon Thomas. 
And the time, 23.37. I'm sure he would be happy with that. Christian Schultz coming through in his own time. These men not racing each other. Different categories and a nice camaraderie between the two men there. Sheldon Thomas first across the line. Two men there running very well. Christian Schultz was going for a South African record not to be 23.36 for him. Sheldon Thomas, 25.90. In 2008, at the Beijing Olympic Games, he was South Africa's only medalist. He finished silver in the men's long jump. Now, 33 years old, but he's competing. He's uh, seen him span over a decade on the international stage. Oh, that's a good-looking jump. That's a very good-looking jump from Hortzumukwena. Well, looking for that 17 meter mark at these championships, he's getting a hug from his coach, a big, big hug. Well, massive, 17.09 meters. He has taken every other competitor out of the competition with that leap. Now, Julian Bevo, bronze medalist at last year's national championships. He's somebody who's flirted with that 16 meter mark, but 15.63 is best here. The ability to go around 16 meters and he would need something akin to that if he is to medal today it's confirmation of the triple jump results Hutzel Mugwena claims his 12th national title six in the long jump he's now matched that with sixth uh, triple jump title men's in tempo a fine silver medal with 16.12 meters junior pair for a bronze medal 15.84 meters for the second year in succession he's a bronze medalist the mixed para men's 200 meters and uh Special interest here, Charles de Toy in the T37 category, that is de Toy. He ran a world record in the 100 meters yesterday in his category, beating his own time of 11.42. He ran 11.41 there, and de Toy going in lane six. Other athletes, Neon and Lovu, Ntumelo, Ntlongo, ran very well in the 100. And then also Diane Bass and Tandu Mashlango. Watch out for Mashlango on the outside with the prosthesis he will finish very fast Diane base at the moment the man in front t38 category is Diane base that is for athletes with coordination impairment both him and shoulder toy Diane base coming through here and longer finishing fast as expected Diane base 23.06 for base so no world records there the world record for t38 is 21.82 but nevertheless, a good run there by Diane Bass. And look at Ntondu, Ntandu rather, Mashlangu. And once he gets that momentum going, hard to stop him. And interestingly enough, Ntandu, Mashlangu, Diane Bass, the winner there. Charles de Toy in his category, also the winner, because of course they're all in different classifications. Great run by both those men, in fact, by all five men in this race. Well, the men in the mixed para 200, all running in different classifications. Diane Base crossing the line first there, but a good run nevertheless by all four of them. Diane, very quickly here, yeah, 23.06. Was that uh, a good enough time for you? Well, we haven't trained for the 200. We have more under focus. So I'm happy with the 200 time today. Have you been four years on the world record, you and your mate? Yeah, first of all, I want to say that I have a world record. It was fantastic to see him so hard. He was very happy and I was very happy for him. It was a very good time for him. On a personal level, how much focus for you on the 200 this season? Well, not a lot of 200 focus. We are focusing on the 100 at the moment. So I'm hoping for sub-11 in the Commonwealth Games. So we have two weeks to, to tweak some stuff. So I'm excited to go back to the drawing board.
Beating it home to Milotar, they might fancy his chances here in the men's shot put, but certainly the names to look out for would include the legend that is Berger Lamprecht, a man who's been competing internationally since 1992. Orazio Cremona is undoubtedly the favourite. He's won the last six consecutive national championships. And indeed, watch out the uh, young talent that is Karl Bluffnoot. <laughs> So, men shot put. There are uh, a couple of big lads in South Africa, and this is the biggest of the lot at the moment. Orazia Cremona, six time national champion. A little be around about the 20 meter mark, maybe just beyond that. He's only one of two South Africans ever to go beyond 21 meters, Orazia Cremona, the other being Janus Roberts, of course, who still holds the national record. Cremona going for his seventh consecutive national title in the men's shot put. Well, this is one of the legends of South African shot put. 44 years old, he turns 45 next month. Berger Lambrecht still competing. 1998, 20 years ago, he was the Commonwealth Games champion. Big drive towards the toe block, and that's gone out beyond 19 meters. Well, around about the 19 meter mark. Maybe just short of it. Burger Lambrecht. First of three semi finals in the men's 200 meters, and the favorite for the gold medal is probably the man here in lane five. That's not him, that's Roscoe Engel going in lane six. Engel having a very good championship, a personal best in the 100. There is our favorite, Clarence Munyai. South African junior record holder with 20.10. He ran an extremely fast heat, 20.23. So the clear favorite here for the title. But first order of business is getting through the semifinals. Bit of strapping behind the knee there of Munyai. But he ran such a good bend in the heats earlier today. Choosing not to do the 100 at these championships. Focusing on his specialist event. We have to mention in lane four, Tandut Lodlo as well. Lane two, Futiwani Modumele decided he's had enough and is not contesting the rest of this race. But look at Munyai. He's doing the same as he did in the heats. Clarence Munyai just streaking away from Lodlo and Engel. Top two only secured of a place in the final. Munyai, 19.70. If that is confirmed, then I can't see how it won't be. That will be a new South African junior record. And more than that, a new South African senior record. The senior record belongs to Wade van Niekerk, 19.84. We'll have to wait for the wind reading. The wind is gusting in the stadium. Munya is hoping and praying that the wind is legal. Two meters per second will not be legal. And if it's a non-legal wind, it will not be a record, but still, that will be the fastest time ever run by a South African, win legal or not. Well, the wind is 1.5, that's a legal wind, and the time has been rounded down to 19.69 seconds. That is a new South African junior and senior record, in fact, not junior, He's not a junior anymore. That's a new South African senior record for Clarence Munyai. Getting a bit excited here about that. 19.69 for that man. There are the qualifiers for the final for the men's 200. But just for now, seven of them don't really matter because Clarence Munyai breaks Wade van Niekerk's national record of 19.84 by running 19.69. It's not a junior record. If he ran that three months earlier, it would have been. But nevertheless, he becomes the 10th fastest man of all time over the 200 meters and only 0.01 of Frank Fredericks' African record. Clarence, the way that heat went this morning, we knew something special was going to come in the semi-final, but did you anticipate what you did? <laughs> to be honest, no. I thought maybe 19.9, 19.8, but I never thought 19.6. So I'll take it and I'll be grateful for what I achieved. Look, there were all sorts of questions wondering why is he not doubling up doing the 100 and the 200? The fact that you focused on your strength, you reckon it's paid off here? Huh? It's paid off. Well, as you can see, the time shows that focusing on 200 actually helped a lot because... If I did the under as well, I still have the final tonight, and I don't think I was, I was going to manage because 
beautiful time here. I can see that you're tired. And we're only in the semi-finals. So, well done. Good luck in the finals. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jason Penroyan, animated character. So that's out towards the 19 meter mark. Rosio Cremona. well beyond 19 meters that's probably well beyond 20 meters a 20.71 meter opening heave maintains the lead he liked that he liked that that's a similar sort of distance a little shake of the head not quite there but a 20.71 meter effort has taken everyone out of this uh, field 20.71 was his first round efforts 20.70 in a consistent series of over 20 meters from Cremona son Berger Lambrechts junior competing uh, for his university he's a Nebraska Husker so Berger Lambrechts Four-time South African champion, three-time African champion, 98 Commonwealth Games champion, and he's 45 next month. Using that rotation technique, and that's again gone out to a very similar distance as his previous attempts, probably just over the 18 meter 50 mark. Perhaps just an improvement on his previous best. The series, that is. He's well over 2 meters 50, 20 meters 50 for his best. So, Berger Lambrecht, indeed an improvement. 18.67 meters. He likes it. He likes it a lot. Well, Karl Blachner might have had hope of a medal. 19.19 meters he threw just two weeks ago, but battled to get over the 18-meter mark. Jason van Rooyen and Berger Lambrecht battle for that silver. In the end, it is the man who turns 45 next month, Berger Lambrecht, the 98 Commonwealth Games champion who claims the silver. But Razio Cremona, a momentous seventh successive men's shot put title. So this is the start list in for the men's hammer throw and what an exciting lineup it proves with the likes of Tepang Makete, the up and coming champion who's gone further than anybody else in this year, Bar Allen coming from South Africa, Chris Haramsa, 22 consecutive national titles, can he claim a 23rd, Carl Hasbrook also among those in contention, he is currently the African junior champion. So, only one thrower is going beyond his 66.12 meter opening effort. The question is whether or not he'll be able to reclaim the lead. A man searching for his unprecedented 23rd consecutive national title. Has his routine. That metal ball on the end of this. Wire, 7.26 kilograms, and that looks to be an enormous attempt by Chris Hanamsa. That should be around about the 70 meter mark. And Hanamsa is particularly pleased. He's been struggling to go around 67 meters. 
for a little while. So Chris Hudham, sir, 69.31 meters. It's just short of 70, but he will take that. He's back in the lead. Expected to do great things in the future is Tsipang Makete. Could it start now? 69.31 meters by Chris Haramsa is the lead. He's got to improve his best by two odd meters from this series. Bronze medalist at the African Championships in 2016. And look to show such talent. This is looking big. It's looking very big. He likes it. That's out towards around about the 70 meter mark. He really liked it. Great technique. Well, this is going to be a straight shootout between Tepang Makete and Chris Haramsa, it seems, in the men's hammer throw. Well, the two are having a <laughs> little bit of nervous chatter and a warm embrace. Oh, it's heartbreaking for Makete because that was a fantastic effort. 69.01 meters, but just, just short of Chris Haramsa's second round attempts. Final of the men's 110 meter hurdles on the track and 10 very high barriers between them and a South African title. One man knows what that feels like. In fact, two of them, but one maybe more than the other. Antonio Alcana has won this three times. He goes in lane four on his outside in lane five. Ruan de Vries, bronze medal winner from last year. De Vries on your right as you look at the picture there. Number 229 is Alvin Botmar, the South African junior champion. There is Alcana. Number 634, the African record holder with 13.11. Oh, no, no. You can see Ruan de Vries there in lane five means business this year as well. Alcana and de Vries, the two fastest men in the year, but nothing to choose between them in terms of times. 13.61 for Alcana, 13.63 for de Vries. The two favorites, they were silver and bronze last year behind Tian Smith. And Western Province's African record holder, Antonio Alcana, three time South African champion. Can he make it four? It's all about having a clean race. What a great start by Alcana. He's flying out of the blocks. Ruan de Vries has work to do now. Alcana's not letting him. De, de Vries trying hard, but Alcana having a brilliant race here. Clean over the hurdles. 13.50, not the fastest time of his life. And uh, Claudia Fulun there sitting and applauding. Last year, she was still competing in this event this year. She has hung up the spikes and still appreciates very good 110 meter hurdles. I should say Claudia Hienes, of course, and just look at Alcana here. No hurdles toppling anywhere in this race. He was out of the blocks like a shot and just continued clean race. De Vries in second, daylight between the two of them. And third place, we'll have to wait and see. Antonio Alcana becomes a South African champion for the fourth time, edging out Ruan de Vries for silver and a very surprised bronze medal for Tian Tlenons, destroying his personal best in the process. Antonio Alcana, I'm just going to say, perfect start out the blocks and from there on in, not a single hurdle touched. You were in sublime form today. <laughs> uh, from the start, I felt good. I got out of the blocks well. Like I'm still not fit enough to finish the race strong because of the injury I had. And like a month ago, I only started jogging. So maybe I could come here and defend the title. So yeah, I'm happy. Did it surprise you that you, you won by the distance that you won, given where you are at and what you are overcoming at the moment? <laughs> I, I wasn't surprised because my training was looking well. It's looking well. I just that I still need to work on my endurance. So the speed is there, but the endurance still needs work. All right, so uh, map it out for us. The rest of 2018 now, uh, once that recovery is done and dusted, uh, what lies ahead for you? Uh, I'm doing the 22nd, I'm doing the competition in Paul. So, and then after that, I think might, I might do the 27th in Sasselburg, I'm not sure. And then it's Commonwealth Games from there. Your expectations of Commonwealth? Uh, hopefully get the medal. Still enough time, so hopefully get the medal. Well done for the win here today. Thank you so much. So, Chris Hardham, sir. This uh, Tux Athletic Stadium, the wind starting to pick up, and it's gusting almost into the faces of the hammer throwers. Might not seem like a significant disadvantage.
Certainly not for a hammer, but it might prove to be. But a 69-31 currently leading ah! is Har Haram Sir. Ah! And again, he sent that out a long way. And that is going to be the new lead. Almost certainly, Chris Haram Sir has sent that out around about the 70-meter mark. 70.62 meters. Wow. That is a mark that very few of the athletes in this field could reach. So Carl Hasbrook. Final attempt for a man who's just stepped up from the junior ranks. Has he got the ability to claim a medal late here? Well, he sent that out, seems to be well beyond the 65 meter mark. He's only just kept it in the, the sector in which throws can be measured. Less than half a meter inside that sector. Now, Tsepang Makete, currently second. He's gone over 69 meters. He's going to need to go over 70. If he is to claim the gold medal and deny Haramsa a 23rd consecutive national ah, hammer throw title, ah, Makete ah. likes it. He's screaming after it. It's gone big, but just how big? I don't think it's quite long enough. It's around about the 70 meter mark. But I don't think it's long enough to beat Haramsa. Either way, the two men embrace. At the conclusion of Marquette's series, has he gone over 70 meters? Both throwers, the young and the old of South African hammer throw, the future Marquette, and indeed the man that is dominated for the last two decades, Haramsa. It's a confirmation then of the hammer throw results. Chris Haramsa is remarkably, astonishingly, absolutely sensationally a 23-time national hammer throw champion, all in succession, an effort of 70.60 meters, beating Tapa and Makete into silver. Carl Hasbrook with a fine bronze medal, edging out last year's medalist, Ronaldo Freshu. Ten hurdles are up. In fact, uh, it's 80 hurdles, 10 times 8 for the women's 100 meter hurdles. Favorite Taylor Bilt in lane 5, the African junior champion, the national junior record holder in this event. She finished fifth last year. And there is one of last year's medalists. Claudia Hina, silver medalist from last year, has retired from the sport, but she's here to watch the other women run. And in fact, top four from 2017 final, not in this race. Athletes going down to their blocks for the third time now in this women's 100 meters. Taylor built there in lane five, the national junior record holder with a 13.35. Also the African junior champion. There is silver medal winner from last year, Claudia Hienes. Hienes is a spectator this year after having retired from the event. And it's John Marie Senegal having a good start. So too Shane Olkers. But here comes Taylor Bilt, the African junior champion. The 19-year-old is storming through this race. Taylor Bilt's going to take it. 13.72. She's not happy with the time. And Claudia Hienes looking somewhat nonplussed, probably thinking if she had her spikes on, she would have won this. Hienes last year ran a 13.23 for a silver medal behind Rickenet Steenkamp. Built last year was the fifth place finisher, but with the top four not competing this year, it is Tenen Built who takes the title. John Marie Senecal on the right of picture there had a very good start. Denise Hartman on the left, 13.97 personal best for the 21 year old in the heats. But the tall, strong Tenen Built 
coming through here. She hasn't run the times that she's been looking for this year. But she does have a South African senior title. What improvement for almost everyone in this 100 meter hurdles. Taylor Bill goes from fifth last year to first. She takes the gold medal. Janka van Weyck goes from sixth to second. And John Marie Senecal gets the bronze. So this is the start list then for the women's triple jump final. It should be an intriguing battle between Zinzi Chawango and Patience Chingila for the gold medal. There might be a few who fancy themselves for the silver medal. Among them undoubtedly is going to be Hunti Muraki. She's only 16 years old, but at 12.45 already this year, and Maruska Janssen von Rensburg might fancy a chance of a bronze. Zinzi Chawango just accelerating down the runway very solid technique nothing flashy about her performances Thirteen oh seven, one three Great zero seven. On take off board drifting slightly decent height on that final jump for second place and in third Ramso Mokopani how does he do that after just having won a 3,000 meter steam he gets a medal in the 1500 but it's gold for Kocinati Sibia Makaula kanga ba shanka na hu 1500 meters Reboni Juano Kocinati Sibia wa bronze So, Hunzi Muraki now, wind starting to come across her. You can see the uh, wind is just starting to swirl at the moment. Hunzi Muraki. Well, she's enjoyed uh, limited success in 100, 200 meters. Use the for the hurdles. She's tried the long jump and uh, indeed competing now in the triple jump. 
So well short of the takeoff board on this occasion. Struggled to get herself some distance into the pit. Gets the signal that she's allowed to go. Gets the white flag for her final jump. She earns a fine series. She's been fairly consistent over 30 meters. So just about where she wants 13, to be. Maybe 13, a little more room to play with, but finishing on a high undoubtedly. The champion in 2009, champion in 2010, champion in 2012, champion in 2015, champion in 2016. After last year's bronze, she's champion again, a six-time triple jump champion. Well, Zinzi Chavango struggled a little in trying to get her approach right. In the end, though, she did register one jump. It was good enough for a silver. The battle we expected between Patience Jingila and Zinzi Chavango not materializing, but Patience Jingila now six-time national triple jump champion, a phenomenal achievement. Khunti Muraki, just 16 years old, with the bronze. one of the highlights of the field events for this senior and combined national championships uh, men's high jump well watch out for the likes of uh, Keegan Faree he is uh, a previous medalist in this event should be looking for another medal here and Paul Lynx another man who's been going regularly over two meters 15 should challenge for a medal up against the defending champion Chris Muller and certainly the standout man of 2017 world youth champion Brayton Poole Comfortably clear at two meters ten. Oh, that's just enormous height. And Mulea showing his class at two meters fifteen, very comfortably clear. Long strides, enormous launch, good velocity, vertical and horizontal. This is the bar at a good point, just near the center. Clear at 2.15, first time. Entered at 2.05. Last of the jumpers to enter. focused looking links African junior championship silver medalist in the past made the finals of the world student games in Korea as well oh it's very comfortable again well, such solid technique he has high jumping peers but there are not many in this competition he's looked focused he's looked determined and his high jumping has looked nothing short of special. A fairly comfortable clearance for Brayton Poole. 215 two meters 15 has never really been an issue for Brayton Poole. And a massive leap. He's only 1 meter 72. And he jumped 2 meters 24 when he won the IWF World Youth Championships in Nairobi in Kenya last year. 50 centimeters over his head was the bar and he cleared it comfortably and he does 2 meter 15 without any concern this time first time clearances all the way through so on count back even if uh, all the jumpers were to fail at the next tight Brayton Poole is uh, currently in first position owing to his first time clearances at every height from 2 meters
who joined the women's 1,500 meters now leading is Costa Semenya coming up here with still three laps to go and Semenya her best time so close to the South African record that you see on your screen there from Zola Bud but uh, Semenya obviously here not trying for that record she might attempt it next week at the Athletic Grand Prix series I'm told but uh, Costa Semenya leading very comfortably at the moment interestingly enough none of last year's medalists in this race Simone Vates won last year in 421.93 I'm pretty sure Costa Semenya is going to win this one Dicoletti but we'll wait and see for the minor medals but like we've been talking earlier on with my colleague that uh, it can happen it's possible I know that it can happen with especially with the time but how she is going on now how she and Semenya coming into the last 100 meters now. She will complete her race with a win. She's extremely focused. You can just see that on her face. The crowd acknowledging their world and Olympic champion. Unbeaten in the 800 since 2015 is Semenya. And here she runs a 410.70. Some way off her personal best, but still a very good time. And I think Jennifer Clutter is going to appreciate what Semenya has done here because she finishes in second. So that the bandaged left leg of Chris Mulea, the defending champion, who needed some medical attention following his first time clearance at 2 meters 15. Yes, now first attempt at two meters 20 and Mulea goes comfortably clear. First time clearance at two meters 20 for Chris Mulea. And despite the bandage on the left calf, there looked to be no discomfort in the plant. Slightest of brushes on the bar, but it stayed on. Not much of a wobble in it. And that's a good looking series for Mulea. Well, the bright smile of a 17 year old that stunned the world last year when he became world youth champion he's a week away from his 18th birthday but he needs something special with his final attempt at two meters 20 to stay in the men's high jump competition mr medal on count back last year he won't have that trouble Guaranteed a medal in the 2018 National Championships. Brayton Pool to clear 2 meters 20 and he's done so. Two jumpers remain and one of them is the World Youth Champion. Spectacular jump. Well, the Athletic Stadium here at the University of Pretoria Sports Ground suddenly erupted. Well, the grandstand watching the jumps of young Brayton Pool. People on their feet celebrating that final jump. Third time clearance. He's cutting it fine, but he's guaranteed at least a silver medal now. So Chris Muller, second attempt at 2 meters 23. He's had a Solid series so far. Oh, and Malaya makes it go over. He's in gold medal position now. Two meters 23 for the defending champion. Long, lanky strides. Gets the vertical height spot on. And has the horizontal velocity to clear the bar without touching it. Consummate clearance from Malaya.
Well, he must be delighted having medal for the first time at a senior national championships, Brayton Pool and Paul Links with a fine bronze medal. Despite the fact that he only cleared two meters 15, he'll be disappointed by that. But Chris Malaya successfully defends the national high jump title he won last year, despite an injury in the build-up. Well, here we are to the main event of the evening, the women's 100 meters. There's your start list. The eight women contesting this race. And in lane five, Karina Horn, the favorite, 11.03. She ran in the semifinals for a new national record, eclipsing Yvette de Klerk and her own mark of 11.06. Those are the spikes of Karina Horn that ran 11.03 yesterday in the semi-finals for a South African record in lane seven there Rick and it's Steenkamp contesting the 100 meter finals instead of the 100 meter hurdles okay. well they are fast and fast as a ball was Rose the birthday girl today she turned 17 but look at Karina Horn running away here Tebocha Mamatu chasing Karina Horn's going to take the title 11.10 and that is a great time for Horn. We didn't expect her to break her own record. The conditions not as favorable as they were yesterday. And nevertheless, Karina Horn posts another very fast time. 11.10 for Karina Horn. And uh, let's sort out the minor placings here as well. Horn started fast, not as fast as Zayi, but it is Tebocha Mamatu chasing Karina Horn all the way. Mamatu is having an excellent season. Look at Cassidy Williamson on the outside in lane six. She's going to finish ahead of Tamsin Thomas. Thomas fourth last year, fourth again this year. But Cassidy Williamson running a great race, 11.39, the best time for the 19-year-old. Karina Horn, though, South African champion again to add to her South African record of yesterday. Karina Horn takes the national title. She adds it to a national record in the semi-finals. She wins an 11.08. Impressive for Tebocha Mamatu and Cassidy Williamson in silver and bronze, respectively. They both run personal bests. 100 meter men on the track and uh, chance for Simon Mahakwe and Enrico Brankis to renew their rivalry. Lane seven is empty. That is because Nasser Drobodwana has withdrawn. And unfortunately, Arkanis Mbine also withdrawn already in the semi-finals, so no defending champion. In fact, none of the defending medalists are returning. Arkanis Mbine, Wait van Ikak, and Tander Otto all injured, which gives a chance for Simon Mahakwe to regain the title he's won so many times before. Well, the blocks are ready. The athletes are ready for the second time. We've had a false start. And Tembu Monareng, who was in lane eight, is no longer part of this 100 meters final. We turn our attention back to the favorites, Simon Mahakwe, Roscoe Engel, and Enrico Brankis. There. This time they're away together. Mahakwe getting a great start there. Engel has a lot of work to do. Thunder Glotlo running well. It's Mahakwe tensing up. Can Brankis catch him? No, he can't. Simon Mahakwe takes the win. Tando Glodlo, the youngster, the junior record holder, is going to get the second position. Branke is only good enough for third. Mahakwe returns to the winning ways he used to show us in the early 2010s. What a race. The time 10.08, but that's of no concern at this stage. It's about a title. The weather tonight not conducive to fast sprinting times. Look at the start that Thunder Glodlo got there, just ahead of Simon Mahakwe. Roscoe Engel was left in the dust. Enrico Brankis trying his best, but tensing up. And there's your finishes. Did Brankis get second? I think it's Glodlo. Simon Mahakwe is delighted with that. The crowd appreciates it. And Simon Mahakwe becomes the national champion for the seventh time in the 100 meters. Nobody else has done that. He wins in 10.07. The impressive youngster Tando Glodlo gets the silver and Brankis gets bronze. Simon, the lion, you roared tonight. What does this win mean to you? 
I'm, oh, it means everything to me because I was feeling good in the warm up area. I'm so happy. I don't know what, like, what happened there, but I got a good start. And then, you know, I flew from the blocks because I wanted to win so bad. There, there was that nerves being played on with that false start. You had to recover, you had to regroup, you had to show strength to get over the line in first place. Actually, I was not ready, the first one, but the second one made a perfect start for me. You know, because, like, I had those nerves on my shoulders, like, I was not settled, but the second one was good. On your outside, you had a man, of course, who has also run a sub-10, Enrico Brenkis, the danger on the outside. You knew that. You had to overcome that. How did you? You know, like, I mean, uh, running with Enrico and uh, Rosco, uh, you saw yesterday they ran the fastest. So I was like, you know, when I got out here, I'm going to go. And I went. Simon Mahakwe, we need to shake your hand as national 100-meter champion. The crowd waiting for you there. So go and get your adoration. And that's how day two concludes. The lion roars once more. We know about the difficulties that he's had on a personal level, on a professional level, and is back here tonight. The time doesn't matter. What matters is that he's won the 100-meter championship. The new national champion, Simon Mukhakwe. Thank you very much for watching.